Hi students, welcome back. In the previous videos, you studied eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now let's see what are vector spaces and subspaces. First of all, we will define what set of objects are. We are all familiar with the notation of R square, R cube and all. We know that R represents a set of real numbers, R2 represents set of points in the plane and R3 represents set of points in the three-dimensional space. The points x1, x2 in the plane are called two-tuple and the points in the three-dimensional space x1, x2, x3 are called three-tuples. When we extend this to the space Rn, we call it a space in n dimensions or we also call it the Euclidean space and the points here are called n tuples. They are given by x1, x2, x n and all these points x1, x2, x1, x2, x3, x1, x2, x3, xn, they are also called vectors of the sets r2, r3, rn. So now are these the only sets? No. There are many other sets. For example, the set of matrices of order m by n that is represented by m n cross n. The set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to n, they are represented by pn. And same way, the set of functions is denoted by fn. These are some of them. Many of these sets, they satisfy properties which are very similar to the vectors in R2, R3 and Rn. All these sets, they form algebraic structures where there are rules defined. How we should add two vectors, how should we multiply a vector by a scalar. And then let's come to the definition of a vector space. Now, any set, if two operations in that set are defined, one operation will be of vector addition and the other of scalar multiplication. And if all the vectors in that set, they satisfy the following properties, we say that this set is a vector space. So what are these properties? There are 10 in number. The first two are known as closure properties. One is when we add two vectors, it should belong to the set. The end result should belong to the set. And when we multiply a vector by a scalar, that should also belong to the set. So these are closure properties with respect to addition and the closure property with respect to scalar multiplication. There are four properties which you are aware or familiar with of group. So first one is commutative law, which means that in whatever order we add the vector, the end result will be the same. Second property is associative law. That is, if we add first V and W and whatever we get when we add it to U, it will be the same as when U plus V is first added and then W is added. There will be an additive identity. What does this additive identity mean? It means that if you add to the vector, the vector remains the same. And same way, an additive inverse should also exist. What does that mean? It means that when we add it to the vector, we should get our additive identity. We also have uh, three more properties. One is distributive law, which means that when we add two vectors and multiply by a scalar, it should give us a into u plus a into v. The next property states if we add two scalars and multiply by a vector, it would be the same as first multiplying the individual vectors by the scalar and then adding it. Lastly, 
we have a b that is you multiply the scalars whatever you get then you multiply it to a vector u or we multiply u by b one of the scalars whatever you get you multiply by the scalar a still the result is same this is known as associative law for scalar multiplication because scalars have been multiplied then the identity property for scalar multiplication means that when we multiply our vector u by 1 we should get the vector back so here we were dealing with only real numbers so it doesn't mean that we have only real vector spaces we also have complex vector spaces but here we will be only studying real vector spaces let's go through some examples the first example is if our set v is r square then does it form a vector space under the usual addition and scalar multiplication when we say usual addition and scalar multiplication it means how we add points in the plane if we have three vectors u v w given here so let's see if we add two vectors u and v the end result is x plus v comma y plus q which is again a point in the plane so closure is satisfied if we multiply u by a scalar a again we get a vector in the plane so both the closure properties are satisfied same way we will see all the four group properties also hold the commutative law u plus v or v plus u both give us the same point in associative law we see whether we add u plus w and then add u the end result is x plus p plus r comma y plus q plus r s or if we first add u plus v and then add w the end result is the same the additive identity here is naturally 0 0 because when we add it to a vector x y you'll see we get the vector x y back the additive inverse of u will be minus u because when we add x y and minus x minus y we get the additive identity 0 0 the remaining properties can also be seen that they all hold whether you add the two vectors and then multiply a scalar a it will be the same as first multiplying u by a and then adding v by a and adding them together a plus b when multiplied by u will also give us the same value as a into u plus b into u the seventh property a b into u is equal to a b u will also hold and when we multiply one by a vector u we get the vector u back so the set of points in r2 they form a vector space under the usual operations of addition and scalar multiplication all the properties are satisfied let's see a particular case what if we take points from the space r3 under usual vector addition and scalar multiplication that also forms a vector space for a better understanding here we have taken u v and w to be particular points and let's take a to be 2 and b to be 5 which are two scalars scalar means they are just constants some real numbers let's see when we add u and v we get a point 5 7 9 which is a point in r3 closure satisfied if we take a to b2 and multiply it by u we get a point 2 4 6 which is again a point in the space so both closure properties hold let's check our commutative law if we add u plus v we get 5 7 9 if we reverse the order we first 
take V and then U, still we'll get 579. Come to associative law. In whatever order we add U, V, W, we will be getting 12, 15 and 18. The additive identity in this case will be 0, 0, 0. When we add additive identity to U, we see that our point remains the same, 1, 2, 3. And so, additive identity is 0, 0, 0. The additive inverse of U will naturally be minus U because U plus minus U will give us the identity 0, 0, 0. Let's check the sixth property. If we add the two vectors u and v and multiply by a scalar 2, we get the point 10, 14, 80. Or if we multiply u by 2 and v by 2 and then add them, still the point remains 10, 14, 18. The seventh property a plus b into u, if we add the two scalars 2 and 5, and then multiply it to the point 1, 2, 3. It gives us 7, 14, 21. Or we multiply u by 2 and we multiply 5 by u and then add the point is the same, 7, 14, 21. Come to the property a, b, u. Here we see that if we multiply a and b, we get 10, 10 multiplied to the vector u will give us 10, 20, 30, which is the same as if we first multiply u by 5, whatever we get, that is here we get 5, 10, 15, and then multiply that with 2, the point is 10, 20, 30. Last property 1 into u is 1 into 1, 2, 3, which gives us the point back. All the properties are satisfied. So points in R3, they form a vector space. Let's see one more example. The set Mn of matrices of order Mn, they also form a vector space under the usual operation of matrix addition and scalar multiplication. The both closure properties will hold. Commutative and associative law will hold. The identity will be, the identity matrix will be matrix with all zero entries. And if we take a matrix A, M by N, its inverse will be minus A, M, N. So, if we take a particular case, U is A, B, C, D and V is P, Q, R, S, we will see that when they are added, we again get a matrix of order 2 by 2. When we multiply this by a scalar, still it's a matrix of order 2 by 2. So both closure properties hold. We'll see that rest of the properties also exist. And here the additive identity is 0, 0, 0, 0. And the inverse is minus A minus B minus C minus D. This is the inverse of U where U was A, B, C, D. So, this set of matrices of order 2 by 2 forms a vector space. What if we take all the polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2, they will also form a vector space under the usual operation of polynomial addition and scalar multiplication. If we take two polynomials P and Q which belong to P2, they will be of the form a2x square plus a1x plus a0 and q will be b2x square b1x plus b0. If we add p and q, we again get a polynomial of degree 2. So p plus q belongs to p2. Similarly, alpha p will also be a polynomial of degree 2. Both closure properties hold and so we see that remaining properties will also hold. Here the additive identity will be a zero polynomial into and the inverse will be, inverse of P will be minus P. Remaining properties can be checked. Hence P2 forms a polynomial, a vector space under usual operations. Thank you. Remaining examples will be done in our next video.